In this lesson, we're going to begin discussing printing. If you'd like to follow along, go under your file menu to open, and in the Working Files folder, go into Chapter Number 15 and select a dialog about printing, and just click Open. To get started, let's go to File Print. And we'll go through the various sections in this dialog box. First thing you got to do is pick a printer. You may have several printers that you can print to on your network. I'm just going to choose one of them. And it's automatically choosing a PPD for that particular printer. In the general section, how many copies do I want? In the pages section, do I want to print all of my pages or just a range? The sequence of pages. I can either choose all pages, just even pages, or just odd pages. I'm going to leave it at all pages. I can also print in spreads if I'd like, just by clicking on spreads. I'm going to go back to pages. I could also print master pages. In the options area, what layers do you want to print? Visible and printable? Or the visible layers? or all layers. Do you want to print non-printing objects? Do you want to print blank pages? Do you want to print the visible guides and baseline grids? Sometimes you may want to do that just to make sure that everything is lining up exactly the way you want. I'm going to go into the setup section. The paper size. I could choose exactly what I want for my media. Maybe I'll choose U.S. letter. The width is 8.5 by 11. Orientation. How is it going to print out? In the options area, by default it's going to be 100%, but I can click Scale to Fit, so it will fit on the page. I'm going to do that because I know that I have bleed and it's not going to fit. So it's actually scaling it down to 93.1%. Do I want to print thumbnails? Or do I have something really big that I need to tile in order to print out? I'm going to go into the marks and bleed section. Do I need marks and bleeds? I could check all printer's marks to print everything. Or let me uncheck that. I could have just crop marks. Or I can add bleed marks registration marks, color bars, and also page information such as the file name. I have use document bleed settings checked already. So if I'm working with a bleed document, it's picking up the information automatically and including the bleed. Do I want to include the slug area? I'm going to go to the output section. In color, do I want it to be composite gray? Well, this is a grayscale printer, so I probably would choose that. I could also choose Leave Unchanged, Composite RGB, Composite CMYK, and also Separations. If I did that, I could print out separations. Let me go back to Composite Gray and go into the graphics area. With my images, do I want to send all data? Basically, that means if I have a rather large image that's been shrunk way down in my layout, do I really want to send all of that data? Probably unnecessary. So I could choose Optimize Subsampling. That means it's only going to send as much data as is necessary to do a good print from this printer. I could also print in low res, which is proxy. As far as fonts, do I want to download the entire font or just a subset, only the characters that are being used within that typeface? Let me go to the next section, which is color management. And it's asking about the profile that I currently have set up. And for color handling under the option section, should InDesign determine the colors? Or sometimes you have a choice of the printer handling the colors. 
but being that this is a grayscale printer, that's not available. I'm going to go to Advanced, and really the important thing for us is Transparency Flattener. Most PostScript output devices and laser printers do not understand transparency, so it has to be flattened, which means the transparency is combined together with whatever is behind that transparency into a JPEG on the way to the printer. And that way, the printer can print transparency areas. So the question is, do we want it in high resolution, medium resolution, or low resolution? Of course, high resolution is going to take longer. Then at the end, there's a summary of everything that's been set up, which you can actually save as a text file. But you could also save all of these settings that we've just set up as a preset. If I were to click that, I could actually name this preset, and it would be available in the print preset pop-up at the very top of the dialog box. So I wouldn't have to go through all of the same settings time and time again. In the next lesson, we're going to continue discussing printing.